quick recap of the week, which has been busy. Russia's invasion of Ukraine entered its second month. North Korea launched its biggest missile test in years. And here in the US, the Senate held confirmation hearings for Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, where she had to answer some absolutely batshit questions. On a scale of one to ten, how faithful would you say you are in terms of religion? I'm an Hispanic man. Could, could I decide I was an Asian man? Do you think we should catch this is, mm -hmm. and imprison more murderers or fewer murderers? Do you agree with this book that is being taught with kids that, that babies are racist? Senator. <laughs> I do not believe. OK, OK, just stop, because just for a second, don't focus on the stupidity of the questions there. Just appreciate how exquisite that pause was. <laughs> In it was contained the strength and patience of every black woman being stretched to its absolute <laughs> limit. In that pause was the divine calculus where she had to balance how much do I want this job and how much do I want to cuss out these preposterous people. <laughs> Call it the Chisholm-Johnson formula. And look, Obviously, those questions were not asked because they genuinely wanted to know the answer. They were asked to generate viral sound bites, the proof of which is in this image of Ted Cruz, right after his questioning, where he's checking his mentions on Twitter in the middle of the proceedings. <laughs> which is honestly kind of amazing. Can you imagine being Ted Cruz and wanting to hear what people think about you <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> that is a doom scroll that will not end well. But for now, let's move on to the royal family. They have had a pretty tough year compared to no one else who's ever lived. From <laughs> Harry and Meghan talking to Oprah to Prince Andrew being stripped of his titles after... Will, will legal let me mention the things he did? <laughs> they won't, even though he definitely did them. OK, then, um, I guess forget those things I mentioned that he definitely did. <laughs> this was supposed to be a big week for the royals, with Prince William and Kate Middleton embarking on an official visit to the Caribbean. The moments royal tours are made of. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge dancing with locals in Belize. A visit officially to mark the Queen's 70 years on the throne. <laughs> also being dubbed a charm offensive. An attempt to sway Caribbean nations to hang on to the monarchy. Charm offensive? Well, it's certainly one of those things. <laughs> that, that looks less like a royal visit and more like beach barbecue night at Sandals Belize. But it is true that this tour was for two key reasons. First, to celebrate the Queen's 70 years in power, a milestone that she's definitely hit because she's absolutely not dead right now. No, 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 don't do the dates. Don't do the dates yet. Why would you do that when she's so obviously fine? But second, this was a clear attempt to try and keep the Commonwealth together, especially as, just four months ago, Barbados formally removed the Queen as their head of state and, during the same ceremony, recognised Rihanna as a national hero, <laughs> proving <laughs> Barbados is currently making all of the right decisions here. But instead of the fawning coverage that the royals no doubt hoped for, this tour has been a disaster. Not quite the welcome they were hoping for at one of the first places William and Kate were supposed to visit, protests forced the couple to cancel. Yeah, that was the first stop of day one. Not a great signal for the rest of your trip. It's like getting to Disney World and immediately being told, sorry, theme park is closed to you because your family committed genocide. <laughs> that is going to set a tone for the rest of your time in Orlando. And things didn't get much better from there because before they even landed in the Bahamas, the National Reparations Committee there released a statement saying the time is now for reparations, ending the letter quoting Bahamian artist Tony McKay saying, I come to collect everything that you owe me, which is a devastating way to end a letter. The only thing that could have made it any more devastating is simply adding the word bitch. I mean, <laughs> the bitch is implied there, don't get me wrong, but it would have been lovely to see it written down. And then there was Jamaica, where things continued going badly. Protesters demanded an apology for the royal family's role in the slave trade and made some pretty pointed criticisms. Mr William, I see you love to dance with the black people and you love to frolic, but... Speak some truth on this trip. Our goal is to loosen and remove the hands, the gloved hands of the queen from around our necks so that we can breathe. How are these two young white people now going to be here saying we are going to kowtow to them and we are going to bend and, and bow and kneel to them as, as if they are gods? Those days are done. Those, the monarchy is a relic. Holy shit! William, Kate, just go. You, you, you just gotta leave. If, 